For our mini-series of specials here on Digital Futures, we're having one-on-one -on -one dialogues and debates with major tech industry influencers to get their take on various aspects to do with the digital economy. Now, we've spoken thus far to the UK's digital minister, Ed Vasey, founder of InnoTech, Jen Arcuri, Uber businesswoman, Emma Sinclair, to name just a few. This time, taking the hot seat is a very eloquent and inspiring CEO of Tech City UK, Gerard Gregg. Thank you for being in my hot seat. Delighted to be here. So, I've got a bad sore throat and I hope you'll excuse that. So do I. But no pressure, I'm counting on this to be a very riveting dialogue. Great, no okay. pressure. So let's dive straight in. Now, let's set the context a little, please, for our viewers. We're seeing skyrocketing growth of the digital economy, both in the UK and also wider Europe. But qualify for us the phrase digital economy. A lot of people are a bit bemused by what this actually means. That's a good question. Uh, what I would say is that uh, yeah, the digital economy right now in the UK is roughly about 10% of GDP, which is about 100 billion pounds. And what that constitutes is of companies that are in digitally digital. And obviously then you're seeing companies transforming themselves through digital technologies. Those of us working in technology say, buy into a lot of these advances, right, from Internet of Things to artificial intelligence, also because we understand them, right? But a lot of everyday citizens, my mother, my friends, yes. say that they feel quite alienated yes. from the tech world. What can we do to bring non-digital natives and non-tech savvy folks along for the ride? I couldn't, couldn't agree more. I simplify it, demystify it. Uh, I couldn't agree more with that question. We all have a responsibility in the, in the digital economy industry or in the digital industries to explain and persuade and inform people about the benefits of technology. And yes, there are risks, of course. And just being able to sort of speak transparently and openly about that. But I, I, I couldn't agree more with your question. Gerard, you're speaking my language. This is brilliant. This is what we're trying to do with Digital Futures as well. It's make seemingly complex topics feel accessible to a non-techie audience. Good. Great to hear that. We're seeing growth in the sector absolutely surge, especially in the last five years and even going ahead. But Gerard, what conditions might we need to sustain this? I think there is no doubt that the continued focus on talent development is super important and ensuring that we have the digital skills that can make this economy as resilient as possible. You know, tech startups are not about technology, they're about people and attracting the best people you can to build a piece of technology that happens to be a business or a product. And I think that's the point. If you have a great team, regardless of whatever, whoever they are, if they can build any technology, that's the most important thing. And that's what CEOs and entrepreneurs are focused on. The UK right now has over 40% of all tech unicorns uh, that have been created over the last 10 years. Uh, a lot of them are in London, but they're right across the UK. And that's terrific. And that's partly to do with the conditions, the economic and policy conditions that have been put forward by this government. And, and also uh, the richness of the ecosystem. As we've seen uh, the introduction of mobile telecoms, given that we are on this program, you know, there has been proof that mobile communication can, can increase the GDP of any country. So Gerard, moving on slightly, do you see a gender disparity in the tech sector? And that's quite a contentious topic that comes up very often. What do you think we're going to need to see to rally more young girls and indeed female professionals of any age to consider a career in the sector? So what I would say is that there are a number of initiatives going on at school level uh, so that uh, people or school leavers have a far stronger grounding in technology and that will have I think a very positive impact on on gender. When we think about jobs in, in the digital tech sector we tend to think of technical skills only but actually as you and I know you need people who are experts in digital marketing, user experience, user interface, application development, uh, user insights, and a number, there's a, there's a raft of other jobs uh, that uh, are, are, of, um, are important and, and, and extremely key to the, the growth of a digital economy. A number of policy changes that are, make, are taking place, uh, not just in the UK, but right across Europe, to ensure that we're doing everything we can for women and men to be um, to have a, a perfectly good shot at uh, doing very well out of the digital economy. Exactly, and in fact, running on the merit of your idea and and 
excluding some of the other factors such as gender or background. I mean, we run an academy uh, called the Digital Business Academy and out of the 22,000 registered users and enrollments that we've had in one year, over 40% are female. And this is, this is an academy that helps you start, run or join a digital business. And you know, that's, it's not 50% yet, but you know, hey, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very positive and, and we're very proud of that fact. And there's also a qualitative aspect here. It isn't purely about a statistic, is it? Shirad, thank you so much for bantering with us today. Massively enjoyed it. Me too, and uh, it's been great to be here. And thank you so much for making me feel so welcome. Anytime. And thank you for watching.